Hello, welcome to this uh, Blender tutorial. Uh, this is going to be a beginner's tutorial as aimed at people who haven't used Blender before perhaps, or perhaps haven't even 3D modelled before. I'm going to assume you know little to nothing. Um, so, I've got Blender 3.4 installed, I believe it's 3.4.1. I'm just going to launch that up here. And uh, you'll get something like this. Uh, so I've got my list of recent files here. You won't have much in there if you haven't used it before. And we've got our options here of how to create a new file. And we're going to go general because we're going to use you know some poly modeling. So once I've done that, and I'm then to make sure that we're all you know running off the same kind of uh, setup, I'm going to go to defaults and load factory settings. And once that's done, whoops, let's do that again. I'm not sure that worked. Defaults, load factory settings, and click. There we go. So now we are uh, all using the same kind of keys and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, that's the basic setup. Uh, in the next bit, we're going to start going into the interface and a bit of navigation. Uh, but I want to turn uh, and my key recording plugin on first um, so I'll do that between uh, sections so I'll talk to you in a moment okay so I've turned my uh, sort of key recording software on it's uh, down here you'll notice I've got like three buttons they're my mouse buttons so if I left click middle click or right click you will see and whatever button I happen to press on the keyboard you'll also see so keep an eye on that you know if I speak too fast perhaps or you know you, you don't happen to catch something okay so what I want to look at is a bit of navigation so if I middle click I can rotate around my object so that's very helpful uh, if I shift middle click I can pan around and if I control middle click I can zoom in and out now there are some other options uh, in terms of zooming and such like so for example you know if I'm a long way out from a particular piece I've got selected I can press the full stop uh, or the period key on the numpad and it will zoom into my selection and also on the numpad that's where we control our kind of camera angles so if I press one I'll go to the front view if I press control one I'll go to the back view uh, if I go two it comes into perspective three is from the uh, left I believe and uh, control three is from the right and then my other favorite is seven is from the top and control seven is for to the bottom now it's useful to get the hang of that uh, because you'll spend a lot of time changing camera angles and rotating around and doing all sorts of things uh, but if you have to have got into a camera angle uh, you could just middle click um, middle mouse button click and you can come back and into perspective mode and do your navigation around okay so just get used to that for a few moments perhaps pause the video uh, so mainly on the mouse it's middle to rotate uh, control middle to zoom and shift middle to pan so just get the hang of that and um, yeah should be good okay next we'll come in and we'll actually start to do some uh, modeling because I want this to be a practical thing I want you to come out with some at the end um, so we're going to have a go at a, a fairly simple model uh, a coffee cup or a coffee mug rather um, so yes I will talk to you in a moment okay so just before we start adding objects i just want to bring your attention over to the scene collection over here uh, we can see we've got a collection and in that collection i've got a camera a light and a cube if i you know select between those uh, i can you know change different aspects um, now i want um, a cylinder in here and i don't want a cube at all so i'm just going to select the cube and press delete and then I'm going to go to the add menu here and under mesh I'm going to select cylinder now this brings in a default um, cylinder 
um, you, you're not stuck at these uh, proportions you can come down here and click on this add cylinder button uh, while it's active and then we can change these parameters now I personally uh, believe it's important to model at scale so I've been to look at the kind of scale of coffee mugs and uh, in terms of that uh, radius is generally four centimeters uh, so an eight centimeter diameter and it's around uh, nine and a half centimeters tall so just note here as i'm typing these things in i'm actually typing the unit if you don't like centimeters if you're better in inches then you could just use the inch symbol um, and it will convert it into meters which is you know fine okay so now i've done that uh, i actually want to move it in space but i'm going to zoom in on it first using the period key on the number pad and have a look around so i'm just using my middle mouse button to click around there um, and i noticed that it is not sitting on the floor so i want to change the location now if you've used other 3d applications um, you'll know that x y and z are the you know the axes um, but y and z um, in other applications generally do different things than they do in blender so y is normally up and down uh, in blender z is up and down or z so i want to move this up onto the floor and to do that i need to put in half of the depth because currently the middle is on the floor uh, so what was it nine and a half centimeters so that would be what 4.75 so 4.75 centimeters there we go and now i should be on the floor if i go into say the front view with the one key you see that's sitting nicely on the floor okay so now we have a cylinder and we're happy with it uh, i don't want to uh, have this anymore so i'm just going to click off that and it will uh, set that as my final kind of cylinder okay so that's adding a new object and proportioning it um, in the next section what we'll do is uh, we'll actually go into edit mode and start to change this uh, cylinder into a cup shape so i will talk to you then okay so now that we've got our base primitive in uh, we want to be able to change its shape and um, we can't do that in object mode which is what we're currently in uh, we need to be in edit mode so if i just click off that uh, i'm going to click on to the object i want to edit and then press the tab key to go into edit mode now edit modes where we can select and perform operations on polygons or vertices or uh, edges and we can give this some shape so what we want to do is basically hollow out this cylinder to give it a more cup like appearance so to do that i want to um, inset this top piece a little bit to form a lip and i'm going to go into polygon selection mode there um, that would either be using these these three icons up here so we've got vertex edge and polygon uh, or i could press the one two or three key so three for polygon so then i left click to select my polygon and what i want here is just to insert this uh, this top piece so if i press uh, i and then move my mouse you'll see it's insetting now um, it doesn't matter where i drop this uh, i'm going to drop it here so with the left click down here we get the inset faces options now i want to inset this four millimeters which seems like a good number to for my edge um, and now i want to actually push this down into the cup to form the you know the inside of the cup and for that what we want is the extrude uh, option and that's the e key and then i can move my mouse up and down it'll either bring it up or, or take it down and again i'm just going to click to set it and then uh, i can use this z option here to push it down to where i want it to 
Now my cup's say nine and a half centimeters tall. Um, I want a kind of a four millimeter uh, buffer between between the bottom and the and this piece. Uh, so if I type minus nine point one centimeters, that should push it down to the right area. I use my middle mouse to just rotate around that to have a look, and that looks perfect. Okay, so um, with that we have uh, a big polygon down the bottom and a big polygon on the bottom um, but you know in my old school ways uh, that's called an engon it's a polygon with more than four sides and I, I generally never want that uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, basically inset this so press I and then move your mouse and then click and now I just want to weld all of this together. And for that, we'll press the M key. That's the M key. And pick the at center option. And that will put a lot of triangles on the bottom. Um, but it takes away that ingong, which is, uh, yeah, not, not desirable in my particular opinion. Other people will tell you it doesn't matter. Um, but I'm a bit more traditional, I think. <laughs> Okay, so we'll do the same under here. So we'll press I to insert and move my mouse in and then press M and then at center. And there we go. So now we have a basic cup shape. Um, in the next piece, what we're gonna do is we're gonna round off some of these edges. Uh, and we're gonna use an edge bevel for that. Um, now, this is something that took me quite a long time uh, to realize when I was learning modeling um, there are there's very little in the world that's got an absolutely sharp edge and as you can see here these are very sharp uh, so we're just going to soften those edges up a little bit uh, with the bevel tool so we'll do that in the next section Okay, so we're going to bevel these uh, edges, but I just want to go through a, just a quick concept in terms of uh, selections. Um, so there's something called an edge loop, and an edge loop is a continuous unbroken uh, loop of either edges or polygons. Um, and we can select those by using the Alt key and then clicking on an area. So I'm in polygon mode, and if I want to select all of the um, polygons around this edge I need to point towards the middle of the um, object towards one side and then press alt and left click so it's just alt and left click there we go and that will select the whole loop around it and that makes selection very easy you know it it's very useful to be able to select things easily in a model otherwise I'd have to sit here go you know with my shift key, key held down selecting each polygon but if I do control and select it will select the whole loop now where you click is important because uh, if I click towards the top for example it will try and loop in that direction and similarly if I do it at the bottom it will try and loop in that direction so either left or right in this case and it will go around my mug so let's go to edge mode and just click off to deselect and now I want to select all of the edges around the top here on the outside and the inside so it's alt click on the outside first and then shift alt click shift will add to my selection and I click an edge on the inside and now I've got all of those selected and now I've got them selected I can bevel them uh, so we can bevel either by going up to edge and uh, bevel edges or as you can see here, there's a shortcut, which is Control and B. So I'll use my shortcut, so Control and B, and then I can move my mouse and it will bevel. Again, if I left click to drop it, it will uh, give me the options down here to change the way I'm beveling. So uh, now I can control how many segments it will create, and I want one segment here. Sorry, I want two segments here. <laughs> so that makes a nice rounded kind of bevel. 
um, the more segments you put in there obviously the rounder it will be um, but because this is a low poly um, stage I don't want to put too much in so two is fine and I might even want to precisely control the width so I could say actually I only want this to be one millimeter and if I click that that does uh, sets the bevel edge to one millimeter which is quite nice it gives quite a soft edge on this this coffee cup and I don't know about you but I wouldn't want anything particularly sharp you know coming near my mouth okay so that's the outside uh, but we have to do the bottom and the bottom inside as well so I'm just going to click to deselect and then use my middle mouse to rotate around uh, alt click around the bottom of the cup and then rotate around with middle mouse and then shift alt click on the bottom and then control b to bevel then move and set and then we can update here if required and uh, now i'm going to set this to perhaps a little more than the the top so maybe three millimeters there we go okay so now we have uh, nicely softened edges which is terrific uh, because you know we want to make a cup that looks like a cup we don't want to make a cup that looks like it would cut your mouth if you put it anywhere near it <laughs> okay so what are we going to do next well next we're going to add in a handle and uh, we'll get to that in the next section so i'll talk to you then okay so to put a handle on this what we need is um, a polygon that which we can kind of extrude um, and pull around and i want that to start you know where the handle would be so the first thing we're going to do is press the one key whoops need to be in there there we go press the one key to get a side view and now i'm going to slice this across and for that we'll use the loop cut tool and for the loop cut tool what we can do is click into the uh, mesh and then move it until it's approximately where we want it so i'll just do that again so first of all we're going to point at my object where i want the loop cut to go you can see i'm pointing at an edge and it's going around the cup then click and drag to move it into position uh, now i want a, another one to click and drag and move that up and now i've got a loop of polygons which i can select to bring out my um, extrusion for the handle Similarly on the bottom, I'm going to click and drag down and click and drag down. There we go. So now I've got the top and bottom polygons for my cup. Um, but I realize I've dragged too far. Uh, my uh, pieces aren't quite you know, right. So I'm just going to go back into normal mode up here. And all oh, and double, uh, sorry, all and single click on one of these edges. And now I can move it. So now I want to move it vertically. So on the Z axis. So if I press the G key, which will allow me to move something, it doesn't restrain it. Uh, but if I now press the uh, Z key, the Z key, it will restrain my movement to up and down. And I want to make those a little thicker. There we go. And I do the same on the top. So it's Alt click to select that loop and then g and z to restrict it to up and down there we go somewhere around there okay so now i have two points that i can uh, extrude out um, but i don't want to extrude it just as it is i want to inset it a little first so if i go to polygon mode and select these two polygons here and these two polygons here I could press the I key to inset and just bring that in a little bit. Oops, come on. There we go. Okay, so that's the starting of it. That gives me the polygons that I need to create my handle. Um, in the next bit, we'll go through uh, the spin tool, which will allow us to extrude this um, these polygons um, on a uh, a curved path 
rather than just bringing them out straight. So we'll get to that next and I'll talk to you then. Okay then, so now we've got our, our polygons in the right place. We want to extrude them on a curve. And for that, we use the spin tool. Now the spin tool is very useful, um, but it needs a little bit of, uh, how can I put it, uh, finessing. In this case, the spin tool is going to use this little bit here, which is called the, uh, the cursor, and it is going to spin around that origin. So we need to put that origin where we want it. And in this case, I want it halfway between these two polygons or these polygons I have selected. So I'm going to use the loop edit tool or loop cut and just click on that middle uh, piece there. And that's put a, 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 a loop around there. And then back to the cursor mode, I'm going to go into vertex mode. I want to select this vertice, which is halfway between the two. Okay, so now I want to put my cursor onto that vertex. And for that, we can press Shift and S. That's not S, that's A. Shift and S, and we get a little pie menu up. And I want to go cursor to selected. There we go. Now you can see that little thing is sitting on that vertex. Now, let's select our top pieces and then use three to go to uh, the side mode. And now I want to spin that around. And for that, we'll use the spin tool. So you can see here, I've got this little blue thing and that's the axis that is going to spin around. And this is the uh, Z axis, which is not the one I want because it's going to spin it around in a circle. Let me just rotate around a bit. You can see that it's going to spin it around in that direction of that blue circle. If I go to Y, you'll see it will spin it around that green circle. And if I go to X, it will be this red circle. And that's the one I want. So I can click on this plus then and just bring that out like so to get a nice curve going. Now I'm not going all the way. Uh, I can perhaps put, you know, perhaps 125 in there. And I may not want all of these loops. Uh, so you can adjust that on these steps. So perhaps eight would be enough uh, for this level of um, uh, model the level of geometry it's got in it. If I put too much into it, then it's going to overwhelm the rest of the model. And I like to keep them kind of, you know, close. Okay, so once I've done that, I can go back to my normal uh, mode. And now I want to bridge this bottom to this piece here. So we can do that using the bridge tool. So if I go to face, uh, sorry, <laughs> edge and bridge edge loops, you'll see that joins those together. Uh, but it's, it's very straight and very unnatural. Uh, so we want to increase our number of cuts here. So if I increase those cuts, you'll see it becomes a little more uh, rounded. And I've deliberately done that uh, because I didn't want these to be exactly the same as the top. I wanted there to be a little bit of a taper at the bottom uh, so that it kind of thins out a little bit. So there we have essentially a little bit of a coffee mug. Now I can see that actually it doesn't really look like a coffee mug. The handle's too low. Um, perhaps the bottom is okay but the top isn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo all of that and then I want to move this whole ring upwards. Now to do that, um, what I'm going to do is go into um, X-ray mode. So if we go to front view first, and then up here, we can click this little uh, X-ray toggle, or we can use the Alt Z key, Alt Z, and that will toggle between the two. And it's good to get used to that because you'll find you use it quite a bit. 
so let's do alt z to select and now this will allow me whoops <laughs> to select all the way through there so if i drag box around there and then press alt z again you'll see that i've got the whole loop around so let's go back into the one view and i want to move it now so g and z because i only want to move it up and i'm going to move it up similarly now I've moved that, this middle point is no longer the middle point. Uh, so I'm going to alt click that to select it and then press the delete key and then dissolve edges. And that will take the edges out, but leave everything else where it is. So let's do that. Now I'm going to put that cut back in. Select my vertex, press shift and S and set my cursor to the selected. There we go. And now we can repeat that little operation. So let me select those there. I'll go into front view, no, left view. And then back to my spin. And I can spin that around. There we go. And you need going a little bit further this time, which I'm quite happy about. Oops, let's try and no. <laughs> now that's something to note. If you drag out and then stop dragging and then drag out again it will repeat it won't continue the same move so let me just undo that Control z i'm going to bring that down to somewhere around there i think okay and now i'll go back to normal mode select my polygons here and select my polygons here and then we'll go to edge and bridge loop now that's a bit unsatisfactory so i'm going to increase my cuts just so it puts a little cut in and there we go that will do me okay so that looks a bit more like a cup right uh, that's the basics of a cup but as you can see it's not finished because my handle is very much uh, squared off and i don't want it to be squared off i want it to be soft yeah uh, so we're going to do that next uh, by adding a level of subdivision. So I will talk to you then. Okay, so uh, subdivision is a way of um, increasing the geometry in your model, um, but not having it set. If you add a level of subdivision, the underlying geometry stays the same, but it displays um, a subdivided mesh. So what's going to happen when we add subdivision? So when we add subdivision, this model where it's curved is going to get smoother. Um, it, it will appear more, you know, flat. You see it's kind of faceted at the moment. Uh, so when it increases the amount of, sub, um, you know, geometry in there, it's going to look flat and smoother and more curved. Where it's angled like this on the handle, it's going to completely smooth it out. Um, so let's add a subdivision modifier. So over here, uh, we can click this little blue uh, spanner or wrench and add a modifier. So if I click add modifier and select subdivision or subdivision surface rather, you'll see that it's now smoothed everything out. Now, not everything is perfect. Um, the edges look better uh, and the handle looks more curved, but there is uh, still an element of you know faceting about it and for that we need to change kind of a, a display property and to do that i'm going to press tab to go into edit mode because i can't do it in uh, in editing mode sorry i'm going to press tab to go into object mode because i can't do it in editing mode and then right click on my object and click this shade auto smooth and that will add another level of smoothing to our polygons to make them look more uh, yeah, realistic, I guess. So there we go. Now it looks much, much smoother, even though the handle uh, could do with a little bit more. Now, in this case, uh, you know, this mug, I suspect, is going to be you know, a prop that's far away. And the fact that the handle doesn't look perfect is not really a problem to me. Um, if you wanted, in this instance, to make that very smooth, we can increase our levels here. 
So if I cruise my level in the viewport to two, same as the render, you'll see it's much, much smoother. There we go. So we have quite a nice coffee mug now. Okay, so we've done that all with um, tools, essentially. Uh, but to get the finish on this, I'm going to want to do some manual edits on the uh, on the, the handle at least. So we're going to do that in the next uh, section. So I'll talk to you then. OK, so we're going to be doing a little bit of manual editing on here, just to finish off the handle, I think. Uh, so I want this bottom to be a little bit nicer and I want to put a little curve on the top as well. So let me go into uh, X-ray mode, so Alt Z, and then I'll go into uh, the side view, which is three. And then what my, I've got edge mode selected. And I'm just going to use my middle mouse to box select over the bottom there. You can see I've just got those two polygons selected. And then I'm going to press G to, to move and Z to constrain it to up and down. And I'm going to move that down a bit. Uh, I'm going to do the same for this little piece here. So G and Z and just bring that down a little bit just to smooth it out. And I could, if I wanted to, grab those two polygons there, G and Z, and just bring that up. OK, so at the top here, it's a little bit more um, a little bit more difficult, but not a lot. Uh, I need an extra cut here. See, I've got two cuts here quite close together, and that was helping me to maintain shape. And I don't have that up here. So first of all, kind of come out of X-ray mode by pressing Alt Z, selecting the loop cut, and then just adding a loop cut there. And now I'll go back into my normal mode and then Alt Z. And now I can move these around a little bit better. So if I box select over there, G and Z to constraint up and down, I'll bring that down. And then this one, G and Z on to bring that down a little bit as well. Now that's a little bit deformed there. So what I want to do is box select over this top piece. And then this time I'm just going to press G and I'm going to move it kind of across just a little bit. There we go. That's not nice. I don't like that anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to grab these here and press G and Z and just bring that up a teeny tiny bit. There we go, that's a bit better. So Alt Z, and there we go. We have a coffee mug with a moderately pleasant handle um, and everything's good. Now, one thing here is that uh, this line around the middle, which I put in as a uh, kind of guide, I don't really need. So what I'm gonna do is uh, Alt and click on it to select the loop, press delete, and then dissolve edges, which, as I said, will remove the edges, but it will leave the, uh, the rest of the geometry in place. So let's dissolve those. Is there anything else I don't need? No, I think everything else is OK. Right, so that's a coffee mug. Um, if I press tab to go into uh, object mode again, there we go. We'll just pull out and have a look at it. And it looks OK as coffee mugs go. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of a beginner introduction to um, to Blender and uh, polygon modeling. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Um, if I had any tips for a beginner, it would be to practice. Practice, practice and practice. Um, and practice on things um, that are a relatively simple shape. And once you've got that down, then you move on to the next thing. Uh, in the next few kind of weeks and, and things, I guess, I'm going to um, do some similar tutorials um, on more complicated shapes. And uh, the next tutorial I'm going to do is um, how to take this shape from a, a grey, or this cup from just a grey object into a, a textured object, and then rendered. Uh, that will be part two of the beginner's uh, side of things. So I hope you found it helpful. If you've got any comments, please let me know. 
um, and I will talk to you again soon.